So thank you for coming. Uh, and I hope it doesn't take you the next hour to load Google while we're talking. Uh, my goal today is to inform and entertain you into considering the open source tool, the luggage, uh, to create installation packages on OS X. I hope that I will provide you with enough uh, information, enough uh, examples to get you started. And that these examples will help you create the kinds of packages that you may need in your environments. And if you can take what you learned today in this session and contribute back to the luggage uh, project in some way, that's even better. Because it is open source and we all share it. The session sl slides and sample code will be available uh, both from the conference and I will link to them uh, from the URL at the end of my talk. And I also expect to have a bunch of time at the end for questions about luggage and packaging in general, because I'm not going to go into quite as much detail as I did during last year's talk. Uh, so if you are looking for even more examples, different examples, uh, please check out the session videos from last year. Uh, and uh, I'll also take uh, quick questions throughout the talk, if you have any. Uh, and I think Justin will be around with microphones so that we can try to capture that in the conference video. So, I'm Jeremy Reichman. As I mentioned, I gave a similar talk last year, but there are new things to share about luggage. And just like last year, I'm sure that installer packages are just what you want to hear about on the last day of the conference. All right? Right? Everybody's enthusiastic about making packages. So last year I mentioned that one of the first big repackaging jobs that I ever tackled would involve Java on classic OS. Who here wants to tackle Java updates after the last couple of months of, uh, of updates that we've had? At least we don't have to really repackage it anymore. Uh, and so based on uh, some of the feedback I got, this year I decided to create a handy diagram that uh, might help relate the luggage to an actual piece of luggage. We use that as a metaphor. Uh, so I didn't like this first one that I drew, so I went back to the drawing board and created a retina version. And this is clearly better. This is the best <laughs> luggage drawing I've ever done. See, when you're drawing a luggage diagram, you've always got to be ready to throw your first one out, your second one out, maybe the first 100 versions out, until you get down to the best. While this is still skeuomorphic, I think it gets to the essence of luggage. <laughs> Unfortunately, although the names are the same, this is about where the analogy breaks down, right in the beginning. Uh, so we're going to just go to the next slide. <laughs> a package icon. Does anybody else see how hopeful it is? It's not fearful. It's reaching skyward with open panels. This cardboard box is bright and energetic and ready to be installed. Why? Because OS X has always had its own installation packages. No third-party tools are required for installations uh, because Apple provides both the built-in installer and the package formats. You know, a new one every single version of the OS, it seems, uh, with slight, slight variations. So these Apple packages have simply become the way to deploy software and files on OS X. Uh, let's have a quick refresher in case you, ha you are new to this. I know we have some people new to packaging. So packages consist of source files with a precise description of where they go, as well as their ownership and permissions, and metadata, like the package version, and whether or not the installation requires a reboot, and whether the files can be relocated or not. It also includes scripts and disk uh, for, to check uh, system and disk requirements if you want, uh, like if you're making packages for end users, uh, as well as scripts that run before and after the installation process. We have bundle packages which work with earlier versions of OS X and still continue to work with Mountain Lion. We don't know how long that situation will last, though, because, but they are the default for uh, the luggage today. Um, you know, Apple could choose to, to uh, stop supporting this format in a future OS. But these, uh, these bundles must be enclosed in an archive, like a disk image, on, on non-OS X systems and for certain kinds of file transfers. The reason for that is that the, a bundle is a, is a folder with uh, many files inside it. Flat packages are newer, and they're compatible with OS X Leopard and later. That's 10.5 or later. They are different uh, in many ways. They're, they're a single file uh, with lots of uh, data inside. And Luggage does support them in at least two different ways. 
Um, but that support could certainly be improved. And that's something that, uh, you know, you might want to come out of this session and, and help out with, even just, uh, even if you're just talking on one of the mailing lists. So packages of one, um, we don't really have things like installer vice and, uh, you know, zero G install anywhere anymore. Um, the Apple packages are the de, fac de facto way to deploy software on managed OS 10 systems that we all deal with. So how do we create them? Well, this is a great time uh, to be packaging software for the Mac. Uh, there are lots of options, including GUI apps. But when I've looked into those in the past, and I haven't looked into many of them all that recently, except for Composer, um, they have had some drawbacks. So I, I, I th I've really thought that we can fix that with 1977 Unix technology. Drinking game, right? Um, this is a dry session. Um, <laughs> so that, that 1977 technology is called Make. How many of you have seen a tutorial on how to compile or install Unix software? Okay. How many people have actually done it? Okay. Got a good number. Don't be scared of Kevin. This is just similar to what we'll be doing. Some very simple things that we can do on the command line. So even though we have had 10 years of Unix on OS 10, that some of us may be a little bit wary of this kind of command line work, but there are some benefits to it. And I'm going to try to explain those. So why would we subject, subject ourselves to this 1977 Unix technology in 2013? Why would we want the terminal, command lines, and text files? Well, we want to make computers productive, usable, and secure, so we manage them. That means we deploy software to them. Learning luggage means that you can deploy more software with faster updates. You can make the installations more accurate and have more control over their results. This is an important thing. Through the computer lifecycle, it's increasingly likely you'll deploy a package to the system, right? Uh, even if you're just doing Apple software updates. The number of packages that you deploy over a computer's lifecycle also goes up. Given techniques like install OS 10 package, you can even perform major system upgrades with packages. So you may need to deploy packages of many kinds. Over the past year, I've certainly seen luggage help out with those kinds of utility packages that can fill in the gaps. Uh, you can deploy license files or scripts, or just don't deploy anything at all. Go payload free, as it's called, and use packages as a wrapper around scripts that will need to run after deployment. So these are the building blocks, the small pieces loosely joined, that make our managed systems progressively better. And I think that if we want to make computers productive, usable, and secure, so we manage them, and then we deploy software to them, and this is a marketable skill, in my estimation. Learning to package is critical to being part of the uh, system administration community in OS X. On the Mac, we have lots of drag-and-drop installs. We get new apps and updated versions frequently. If, you ma if you're managing computers, you want a quick turnaround to getting this new software out to them, and that means you want a reproducible process, uh, even if it's just something in a wiki, uh, that lets you automate and, rely and, and, uh, and produce these packages quickly. You want a reliable tool. And if you can install your tools everywhere because the licensing costs are, are low or zero, uh, that's even better. Luggage fits that bill. We start with source files. We then run them through the luggage process using make. This results in an installer package, which can optionally uh, be wrapped in an archive format. If a new version of the same files must be repackaged, uh, then we just feed them back through the same process, possibly with minimal changes. And since make can run arbitrary scripts, we can also we can also envision having other possible targets for the installers that you build. Make files can do other scripted steps. So you could potentially send them to a remote server or anything you can imagine. Anything you do in a, in a, in a script, you can do as part of the make build process. So with luggage, we can rebuild the package using the same set of instructions as before. So we must deploy things, right? 
let's, uh, let's go through this chart and figure out where luggage can fit in. When we deploy something, is it only a script? If so, um, can we deploy, can our deployment system just deploy those things right off the bat? So I, I'm familiar with Monkey. Monkey has the concept of a no package, package info file. This is where this train would fit in. So if we can just deploy it, let's deploy it that way. But oftentimes, we are deploying more than that, so we need to know what files are involved. Right? You have to know what to, de to deploy before you deploy it. And if we're deploying a simple drag and drop app, or doing almost anything else in this chart, we still have to know what files to install. And then we have to collect them together. And then if we're using luggage, we create a make file for it, run make, and then we ready that for package and deployment. So how does this all fit together? This shaded area is where I believe luggage can help. I tried to make it look like the state of Delaware, but I had a problem with that. So there are advantages and disadvantages to the luggage, just like talking in front of people. Um, <laughs> my favorite advantage of luggage, that is, is that I can take input files and run them through that repeated process that I keep hammering in here. Uh, and that, set, that sets up the working directory. Um, the advantage of luggage is that it's making a working directory for us so that when I run the Mac package making tools, the package making tools are using that directory that's been set up very precisely the way I want with the right files, folders, permissions, and ownership. Because luggage has the definitions for all those things. It processes that source data using that recipe through Apple's package making tools, of which there are at least three now, uh, and produces a package. So the luggage excels at, at uh, packaging drag and drop apps. You should be able to apply it to self-contained apps like those from the App Store as well. Love to hear if anybody does that. Uh, and once you're set up, it just takes one command to create a new package. It's quick to repeat that process and make changes. You can modify your process with command line arguments that send in variables to the make file. And if you want, you could wire your package building commands up with a schedule or trigger, perhaps uh, running them with a launch D job. Another advantage is that luggage's data format is just a text file. It, uh, both computers and humans, like you with some training, uh, hopefully you'll have that uh, after today, uh, that you can read it. Both uh, humans and computers can read it. Uh, the make file syntax is, that is used is open and understood by others. Maybe not by you yet, but hopefully we'll, we'll take care of that today. And if you haven't used make before, I want you to be able to get to that point uh, where you can use a make file by the end of this session. Or at least be able to read it uh, so you can see what's happening. So the nice thing about this text file format is that you can, you can uh, select the text editor of your choice. There's no app lock-in. The format and process uh, of, of dealing with this allows you to review your packaging code. So you could do this six months from now or with your team, should you have one, and even with others across the Internet if you're sharing something that um, you know, is commonly used. An installer for Firefox or Chrome or something like that. Should you choose to add version control, you can also use uh, that to make checkpoints that document the development history of your packages, and let's face it, the blame for who you know, did something that they shouldn't have, or at least find out why they did what they did. But there are also some disadvantages to this. Disadvantages to this. Sometimes it does rain on our conferences. Um, first, there's a learning curve. With the luggage, it can really help to learn how to use make because you're creating make files. It's a simple thing. Uh, the luggage does not find the files that you, you need to install for you. If you don't know what is installed with a package, with an application, you'll need to start by start with another tool that helps you find that out, to watch file system changes or something of that sort. You do have to keep luggage up to date yourself, as there's no built-in software update with Sparkle or otherwise. Um, but if you know how to use tools like Git or Mercurial, that can help. As we'll find out a little bit later, luggage 
in strange fashion, can package itself. So you can use that to distribute luggage out to your systems. Hmm? It's very much. So when you're learning luggage, you have to check a number of sources of information. Ultimately, though, it does pay, go back, pay to go back to the source code of the luggage.make make, make file. Uh, this is really the source for all of the, the things that we're going to be talking about in the demos. And I often will take code out of that and put it into a new file. Uh, but an important point, and one that came up after last year, is that this luggage.make make, make file uh, is you're going to be we're going to be including it over and over in our examples. And the reason for that is that we include the commands so that we don't have to put them put the exact same commands in our make files again. And we're, it's a lot of code reuse by including this in our make files later. So another dis disadvantage is that if you do happen to add inversion control to your packaging process with luggage. Um, that does put another layer in your packaging process. And depending how much, how many people you have and whatnot, you know, it may be worthwhile. But if, it, if you're just a small shop, just one person, um, the revision control portion of this may not be something you want to do. We're not even really going to talk about version control, but there have been sessions at the conference about Git, and that's one way to do it. I happen to be a fan of Mercurial, uh, which is a very, very similar uh, tool. So the luggage requires some setup. How do we get to that smooth sailing where we can... Uh, where we can use this tool. First, you need to get an Apple ID. Uh, and I, uh, if you already have one, you know, I, I'm sure no one here has one. Um, or 10, or 12, 20, 100. Um, you need to get one. Sign up with that developer, or with that Apple ID to get a developer account if you don't already have that. And then log in with that developer account. And thanks to the changes that came around with Xcode 4.3, uh, where the various tools that used to become bundled uh, together with Xcode were split up into different installers. We must get the auxiliary tools installer and the command line tools installer. And in this case, uh, when we're dealing with uh, the uh, auxiliary tools for Xcode, uh, we will need to symlink pa package maker from where we put it uh, into user local bin package maker. Okay, so uh, so that's an important step. That's where luggage is going to look for that, and we need this tool by default. You want to do that with the command line, yes. Or or if you have a GUI, GUI tool that will help you make a, a sim link, you can do that as well. Not a, a, not a traditional classic OS alias. That's correct. Sim link. Um, so there is no installer for Package Maker, which is kind of ironic, don't you think? Package Maker doesn't package. Um, therefore, uh, I do typically copy it from the disk image for the auxiliary tools uh, into my utilities folder. You can put it wherever you want. Once you have the luggage set up, uh, you could package Package Maker uh, with luggage uh, to deploy it to your workstations if you want. So the, the command line tools are an actual installer. Um, the latest version of that is from April 2013. And that includes make. We need make in order to get this to work. And it's, uh, we really need a text editor. So whether you're doing this with uh, a text editor in the terminal, uh, which some of you may enjoy, um, or you enjoy a GUI tool like bbedit, uh, which is the tool I typically use, uh, we'll need one of those as well. And we can move back and forth between them. So then there is the luggage itself. It's an open source tool, as I said. It's a software project on GitHub. And GitHub is a site for sharing software projects. You've probably heard about it in a couple of different sessions this week. Um, and you can get to it from the URL here on screen, um, possibly later. Uh, and if you, have, if you don't use GitHub, you can click on the zip button in order to download the entire current version of the luggage. Um, you can see. You know, in the in the screen below, there will be uh, dates for when the various files were updated. So if you notice that there's an update since the last time you got it, you can download again. Um, so if you downloaded it last year, there have definitely been changes since last year, since this talk last year. So please do download it again when you get a chance. Some of those are helpful. And you can also use version control clients like Git and Mercurial um, to, uh, to keep your local copy up to date, if you so choose. 
so each time you download it, uh, to get it up and running, get it into, get it installed into the right places, um, you want to use a sudo capable account uh, on your Mac and go into the uh, directory that you downloaded, uh, the actually decompress the luggage uh, archive that you download, uh, and then go into the directory that results from that, and in the terminal type sudo make bootstrap underbar files. And that's going to install make in the right places on your system. Now there's also a Ruby gem, which is an, uh, an extension to the Ruby language that's required for the app to luggage.rb uh, script that is included with luggage. I tend not to use this script. Um, I demonstrated it last year. So if you want to see more about how to use that, you can, you can uh, see last year's session uh, in the places that's available. Uh, and again, you'll need to log in with a sudo capable account in order to install this Ruby gem, but uh, other than that, than talking about it, I'm not going to demonstrate that today. Except that I forgot to change the slide title. Um, so after you bootstrap luggage, luggage can then package itself. Uh, so this is handy because you probably want to deploy it to your IT workstations. If you have a couple people doing packaging, you're going to want to push it out to their systems. You want to probably want to be able to build their systems as quickly as you can build everybody else's, right? Because, uh, you know, everybody upgrades once in a while. Uh, and uh, if you happen to want to run that uh, Ruby command, get that uh, Ruby gem, you can put that in the, uh, the post-install action for your deployment system. Uh, for example, Monkey has that kind of capability that I'm familiar with. Uh, you could run that command uh, in a post-install script. And that gives you a package that looks like this. Very exciting. This looks like a standard package, um, but it says install luggage. And you just run that like a normal package. So let's start a road trip here. Um, you know, we're, we're, we got our luggage. We're, you know, get on the road. Let's make a make file. So we are going to make a make file with MarsEdit, which is a blog uh, posting tool. We're going to copy the MarsEdit application uh, into the same folder where we have the make file that we'll be using as a recipe. So we're going to create an archive of the MarsEdit application. Uh, we don't want any parent path information in this tar archive, and we want to use Apple's version of tar that include, that's included with OS X. We use that version of tar here because it puts the entire application bundle into a single file and preserves file system information that we may need on OS X. So uh, there are alternatives to this. You don't always have to tar things, but this is kind of the default uh, operation for uh, applications in luggage. So at this point, you're probably thinking, especially if, not, if you don't deal with a terminal every day and all that kind of stuff, you're just thinking, this is going to take forever. You know, this is, but this is not so. All right. that, that was erasing a drive, I think. Um, so we... we uh, we start off by making the make file in that same directory where we archived MarsEdit. And we, the first line says that we want to include the luggage make file. And here I'm breaking lines with a backslash for the slides. You probably would not do most of this in a text editor. You wouldn't break lines, you know, at 30 characters. So this shared make file is the, is the, the core of luggage. And it includes the definitions that you will use either directly or by copying um, and modifying to build in for uh, new building blocks later. Then in that same text file, we're going to define some variables. And we need a title for the package. And we need a reverse domain and a payload. Payload's currently listed as empty here. And if we fill in those... Uh, in those variables with what we want from MarsEdit. We've got the title of MarsEdit, a reverse domain uh, for the developer of MarsEdit, Red Sweater Software, uh, and a payload. Notice again I'm using backslashes as a continuation so that uh, these lines would can wrap on the screen here. And this uh, this wonderful payload looks looks uh, great here, this unbz2. That's saying that we're going to uh, decompress the, tar, the compressed tar archive of the MarsEdit application as part of our payload, as part of making the, work, the uh, temporary directory, the working directory that Luggage will use when running through the Apple packaging tool. Luggage is really a preprocessor. And to run that process, we save the make file, 
that's and, and make sure it's in the same directory as the Mars Edit archive that we created, and then we run make pkg. Now, you can just run make pkg, but I generally recommend, especially when you're getting started, that you just run sudo make pkg with a sudo capable account. Uh, it tends to lead to a, you know, a fewer errors uh, when you're using um, these make files. The uh, make dmg command compiles the package and wraps it in a disk image by default. And that, uh, that, that default format for the disk image is udzo. And that format is read only, sized for the contents of it, uh, and compressed with gzip level, level 9, which is the highest. And that makes it compatible with OS 10 versions uh, all the way back to 10.2. Uh, so this format is highly compatible. The default compression helps save space so that if we're putting lots of packages out, especially lots of little packages, um, we're, we're saving some space on our drives in general, um, which matters again when we have SSDs. Uh, you can override that compression and have different formats, but I found little reason to. Um, this actually comes out to be um, the best in almost every case. So we are going to have a little fun here and see if we can have a live demo that works. All right, so on my screen, we have a number of different things. Um, first of all, we have the make file that's in my Mars edit folder where we're going to be doing the packaging. And in this, in this make file, uh, I'm going to specify that I want to use Mars edit 2.4. Yeah, I'll get the right thing. 2.4.4. All right, I'm going to save that change. Well, we have the include line that I described. We have the title of Mars Edit. We have the reverse domain, the package version, and the payload, just as we saw on the slides. So we're going to go to terminal. Okay, and we're in the directory. I'm going to show you that uh, we have. Mars edit. Best laid plans, huh? Move this over a little bit. So we have the make file, the Mars edit app, in that directory. So we won't have wide text with ls. Just a couple of steps. Clear that. All right, so now uh, we are going to we're going to do user C J V F Mars edit. To me, the uh, set it dot Okay. Very exciting stuff. We've just made an archive. All right. That's the output of uh, TARP. We'll clear that for right now. Um, and we'll just do ls minus one in the right order to prove that we have marsedit.app.par.bz2. This is for marsedit version 2.2.4, or 2.4.4. And now I'm going to do sudo make pkg. And before I put in my password, I want to make sure I bring up this window, this is the finder window, so you can also see that these files have been created. I'll put in my password for sudo. And that's the output of the luggage, the make uh, process going on behind uh, in the terminal window. And we have just created a package. Live demo accomplished with a very few problems, I guess. So um, now. 
I'll, I'll actually show this right now. This is a real package. Um, I have suspicious package on my system. Suspicious package is a tool I'll talk about later, but I use this to check my uh, packages when I create them. And under applications, a Mars Edit app, I have the full Mars Edit application here. Okay, version 2.4.4. But this is no longer the most uh, current version of Mars Edit. Okay? So this is the, the kind of process I, I've talked about where you get a new versions of files, new versions of applications. Could be your, could be new scripts that's, uh, that you've developed in-house that you want to deploy that uh, new version out. You want to make a new package. So how do we, how do we take care of that? Well, I happen to have the new version of Mars Edit available. So I'm going to drag some things out of the way and trash these because I had backup copies just in case. Uh, and we're going to take Mars Edit version 3.5.9, put it up in this finder window. So you can see, finder window, Mars Edit 3.5.9. There's no, nothing, uh, nothing up my sleeve. I'm wearing short sleeves because it's warm and humid. Uh, and I'm going to go back and Bring the finder forward again. And we want to make a package for this. Do we need to make any changes? Yes. One more change. If we go to BB Edit, and we change this version number. That's the only change we're going to make here. 3.5.9, same version that we had in the finder window. Okay. And save. Important note, important note about these files, do make sure that they're using Unix line endings, uh, because otherwise you will have problems. Bring the finder forward again. And terminal. I should have done that in the other way. All right. And Aaron's click. All right, so we're going to do just the same process. Make PKG. So you can see how quickly this runs. It's not going to be 110 days. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. Thank you very much. It's good to have a helpful audience. We get a lot more output from Make than, or from, uh, from Tar than we'll probably get from the, uh, the Make tool. We'll clear. You can see that the tar archive has been created. And we're going to go back and do make PKG again. And drink. And we've just made a new package with the new version of that software that we can immediately put into our deployment system if we want. Question. As in a different place other than the applications folder? Um, you don't need to do that with, with luggage because we already have in the, in the luggage.make make, make file predefined definitions for all of the permissions that, for all the locations that, that luggage knows about. So it uses those definitions when it's creating the working directory, and because the working directory has them set behind the scenes by the luggage tool, that's all of what's been run here, um, then that working directory is correct before it's fed into the Apple packaging tools, and then the Apple, Apple packaging tools create the correct um, payload and bill of materials. Okay, That's one of the advantages of doing this. That's the precision of luggage, because it's been scripted ahead of time, you know, people who, who have contributed to this in the past have already put in the, the correct permissions, with the exception that, for example, uh, if you're building today on Mountain Lion, and I think Lion, the permissions for the library folder for the local domain did change from Snow Leopard. Um, so you, you, you get warnings about that, but those are, those are uh, inconsequential uh, for your actual package because you're really worried about the payload that gets installed several levels deep into that folder. Does that answer your question? Okay. So
So that's our demo. Uh, and let's just do, while we're at it, let's just do make DMD. Very exciting watching the text fly by. Does everybody else feel like they're in the matrix? I know. I have the screensaver. It, you, you're going to laugh in a few minutes. All right, so we've created the disk image, marsedit359.dmg. Um, and that, what that does is that contains the, uh, the package that we, that luggage creates along the way. Now, if you're do, just doing make DMG first without doing make PKG, you will not have the package file in this directory. You'll just have the resulting DMG. But the package file is built and still put in the disk image even if you run make DMG first, um, without the, the other command that we first used. Okay. What, uh, for other software? Um, you can do that. Uh, I've actually taken that out of my slides since last year. There is a, uh, there's a, actually let me clear that first. So you can see it a little bit better. So you can, Actually, uh, just, you don't run it with it. Yeah, sorry. I never use, use PKGLS, so I shouldn't let, it, let you uh -oh. walk me into the demo of it. But it'll make a package and then spit out the list of all the files that are in the package. Yeah. It'll, you, you can't see them because I had to make the screen so narrow to fit in to fit large text in 1024 by 768. But on my other terminal that I'm looking at here, I can see it. So if you want to see it afterwards, come, come see. It's kind of like the LSAL issue we had earlier. All right, so that's it for the demo. Um, and that went off pretty well, I think. So yay. Uh, so those are the basics of creating your own, your own uh, make file. Um, you can do that over and over again, particularly with applications. It's just a, typically a one-line payload. Um, but for, for other things where you're going to have um, multiple files, there'll be more than one line in the payload because each line will specify an item that will be in, in, in your installer. We can get away with doing one line for, for uh, applications because we've done the tar step up front. Normally, I would not recommend creating a rule that takes an entire directory. Um, cause that sort of defeats the, the purpose of that precision that we can get with make, uh, with luggage. So, let's customize some stuff further. So, make files consist of variables, rules, comments, and directives. Things like if statements. And we saw some of the required variables, the, the very basic things that we needed to have in the make file. But there are many other optional ones that can help create the packages that we need. So the optional variables typically have default definitions in the luggage.make make file, but they can be overridden to suit your purposes. So these are a couple of defaults, package ID, package version. You can see package major and minor version because I don't have the version object that Python has. If you saw the Python session earlier this week. Uh, and package name. The package name is normally the title of the, uh, uh, that's listed in your make file. And the package version variable thrown together with a dash. Again, I'm using backslashes for a continuation character. And I like to override that myself in my make files by just setting package name to equal title. That way my output package does not say marsedit dash 2.4.4.pkg. It just says marsedit.pkg. And I like the way that shows up better. Um, so your mileage may vary on that. The package format uh, is also something you can select. It starts out as one compatible with OS 10, 10.4, uh, Tiger, uh, go Tiger. Um, <laughs> and I would not change this right now, uh, but it is clearly something that we will need to change if Apple stops supporting the bundle package format in the future, because uh, bundles um, are, are what's built with this default setting. So if you need to create the newer flat package format, you would set this to 10.5, um, so it would be compatible with OS 10 Leopard and later. 
you can do that. And there are differences in how the packages are constructed internally. Um, and so you will need to account for those changes. Um, but the same make file, uh, in almost every case, can generate a flat package as easily as a, uh, a bundle package. So that's a nice thing. So all you'd have to do is switch your default over to 10.5 in, in here, and Package Maker should generate a flat package file. There's a, and there's a second way to create flat package files, uh, which I've commented out here, which is use package build equals run. Uh, and uh, this is a, a newer, this uses a newer tool than Package Maker. It's something that comes with Mountain Lion. It's built in. You don't need to do any extra installs. But this is the place where I think we, we as a community, you know, if we can work this out better, we can get better tools for building flat packages uh, for the newer and newer OSs. Um, I don't have a whole lot of information to give you about package build right now because I, I wouldn't recommend using the flat package format right at this time. But by next year, that may change. You can also determine whether the installer works only on the root volume or not uh, and whether or not a restart is required. So these are the defaults that are listed. Uh, it's not just limited to root only and uh, you can, uh, it, it's, it's set not to require a restart. So Make relies on dependencies to do its work. It's a dependency engine, uh, where each dependency is a small piece joined with others, and the locations in the system where you store files are listed in that luggage.make file. They carry the lowercase l underscore prefix. And here, the launch agents folder depends upon the uh, library folder and then the root folder. Does this make sense? You're going reading up. Each level ha defines the, the folder that's being created and its ownership and permissions, which is where we get to the precision. And these locations are then created for you when needed, when they're called for, in that temporary working directory that Luggage used to, uses to create the installation package. Um, and while they look like a uh, path that you'd see in a standard OS X system, uh, and that's the point. They don't really represent what's on your startup disk. They represent something that's going to be put into a temporary location that's fed into the package making tools. To install a single file into a location, you use a pack rule. This is like that unbz2 applications rule that we used earlier. But the app bundles are a special case. Um, the pack type rule applies to single files that will go in most of the common install destinations. The percent sign in the rule in the, is in the target to the left. That represents, um, it's the left of the colon, specifically. The colon is important. Um, that represents the name of a file in the same folder as your make file. So if no file by that name exists where the percent sign is, um, then you will get an error when make tries to find this, those sources after the colon. So that's why the colon is repeated, or the percent is repeated again. That's saying, I need to have the file represented by the percent sign. So in this case, the pack rule also requires a launch agent that, like we just saw in the previous slide. And if it, if, uh, and none of those things are present, the location rule will create it in the temporary, um, location that luggage is creating. And these types of rules are typically added to your payload variable. So you'll see a lot of these, you know, when you're, you're going to see a lot of packaging rules in the payload, uh, one for each file, typically. So packages can, can contain more than just a payload. They can include scripts and other resources. Uh, it's easy to create these, uh, to create payload-free packages with luggage, um, and I, I've seen a lot of that done in the last year. So you may use scripts. You, all you have to do is install, uh, put a script in a package. You don't even need to have any other payload. Luggage will create a phantom payload for you, which is where you'll see the slash uh, uh, user local folder. Uh, and you can even reuse existing scripts uh, from, a, from another context into the packaging context. Um, and so that's, that's one way to uh, you know, leverage some work that you've already done on scripting, if you want. The packages that you create for sysadmin use versus those for end users may have different needs. Uh, sysad sysadmin deployment packages uh, probably rely more on uh, payload and scripts, um, and they're typically meant to run solely in the background. Uh, but the package is aimed at end users, which you may be doing, you know, perhaps at a university where you want to put, have an installer that people download uh, to install your certificate authority or something like that. 
Um, those can benefit from more clear requirements checking, uh, including the and the uh, welcome readme and license files. Uh, it can tell people you know, what they're installing. Uh, and those are the things you see in different panels as you're clicking next, next, next through the installer interface. You can build those with, uh, include those with the luggage. Some good information about that. Uh, the best reference that I've seen for how to, to add the script resources for these older bundle packages is this page uh, from the maker of Iceberg and Packages, two packaging tools that you may be familiar with. And there are three text documents, the, the welcome readme and license files, that you can add to installers. They can be written in any of the formats that are listed, HTML, RTF, and so on, uh, depending on your need for text styling and images and so on. But the file names themselves are important. That's the, the critical takeaway. And you would package them up like this. Luggage can add those text files to installers with the pack uh, EN resource rule, um, which adds them to the EN LPROJ folder. So that would be localized to English, to be clear. Um, if you need something in another language, that's a rule you could potentially add and contribute back to luggage if you want. So I find it's important to test, 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 and test some more my installer scripts. Therefore, I have memorized this keyboard shortcut uh, sequence. So command L, command 3, uh, which opens the log window and shows all the messages in the installer log. While, while you have installer open. It's a very neat, very handy thing to know. Um, and if, you, if you're if you including scripts in your packages um, and you're echoing output or something like that, um, that output goes into the log that you'll see when you do command L, command 3. There are also various kinds of scripts that run at different points during the installation process. Uh, these must have specific names. But they can, in turn, call scripts by other names. And these are the script names that's, that we have to choose from. The post-flight script is probably the one you'll use the most in bundle-style packages. And I would very much caution you to uh, avoid taking any actions in a script that would affect the payload. So commands like CP for copy, MV for move, RM, uh, and almost anything else that affects the file system, those really don't belong in package scripts. And it makes it harder for us as sysadmins to take those packages and figure out what happened. So we've all seen that, uh, I think, with, with packages that we've gotten from vendors. I've, you know, we, we were talking last night about some vendors that include installer in a, in a post-flight script. So they're, you know, it's a very bad way to chain installers together. But I'm a purist on that one. Um, so post-flight's going to be frequently used for bundle packages, and the pre-install and post-install are really the only two scripts that you can do in the flat package format. So I just wanted to warn you about that. Um, so the names are a little bit different. They're, they're, you're more limited, um, more limited in what scripts you can include in the flat package format if you choose to jump towards it. So here are some rules that would be added to the luggage payload variable to include script resources. Pack script, pack script and in this case, post-flight and post-install. Up to this point, we haven't used any directives or conditionals. Uh, one way that you might want to use them is to add default preferences files to an app package. Um, you could do that as a separate package to make it more modular, and I'd probably recommend that. Um, but by default, you could build them into a package if you if you want to if you want to. Uh, so, for example, um, we could try to bundle in the um, com.redsweater.marsedit.plist preference file for marsedit in a script. If we uh, if we called uh, make PKG with a certain certain command line option, so we have the if def add prefs, which says if that add prefs variable is defined, then use the content inside that block, and then we end it with an end if. And inside the if def block, I've appended with the plus equals operator to the payload variable. So this, I'm only adding this to the payload in the case where add prefs is defined. And so in this case, if I ran the first command, sudo make pkg, I would get the normal package. But if I ran it with sudo make pkg add prefs equals 1, which just sets 
add prefs to something, then um, then that if def block would be true and the the uh, preference file would be appended. So let's take a look at adding support for screensavers with red pill, which is a matrix screensaver. Um, very appropriate for all this text that we have flying on the screen. So screensavers are kind of like apps. They can have executable code. They could be quartz compositions. They could be bun they they can be bundles. Uh, they're often distributed with drag and drop installers or maybe in in uh, zip archives. Uh, so they don't come in packages, and they may have file system attributes preserved. So Luggage can already handle things like this, but it doesn't know about where to install screensavers yet. I'm going to teach it. So let's try adding a screensaver. Here's the red pill screensaver. Normally it would go into a place like library screensavers, uh, perhaps, or, or the uh, screensavers folder in your home directory. But we've got to teach Luggage to do this, and nobody in their right mind ever writes a make file from scratch, so we're going to take something from Luggage make and uh, and and retask that. So we're going to reuse an existing rule from luggage make and modify it. We're going to take library startup items because it's very similar to library screen savers, and we're going to change it. So here we have library screen savers. Still depends upon the library folder location that's defined in the luggage make file. And we're going to change from startup items to screensavers. And because screensavers has a space in the name, we have to make sure that we escape that with a backslash. So I'm not using it as a continuation character, I'm just escaping that for the shell. You can also do quoting if you want, if you prefer to do that. So we're going to you know, go uh, and make a pack rule for this. We're going to start with an existing uh, stanza from luggage make. All right, in this case, I chose to use pack applications. This is slightly different from the unbz2 applications uh, pack uh, rule that we used before. Um, this will actually take an entire folder. So this is where I'm doing what I said not to do earlier, um, where I'm where I'm pull pulling an entire folder. Um, but um, there, this is an existing rule in luggage that will let you pull in an existing folder that represents an, an app bundle. Um, and it does it in a relatively safe way. So I'm, I'm just going to reuse that to show you an example that you can use folders if you really want to. Just please don't package up your entire library folder this way. Um, that would not be good. Or your entire applications folder. Like small pieces, loosely joined. Uh, so we're going to change these items, pack applications. We're going to change the uh, folder that we depend on and the paths. And here's where we start to see the change in the name. We're going to do pack library screensavers. And we're going to change to depend upon the library screensavers location that we already defined a few slides ago. And we're going to change the paths so that we are copying the files that uh, represent the screensaver, any screensaver we happen to pick, uh, into the library screensavers folder. Um, and you're just going to have to trust me about the magic variables that are here, because um, that's one of the more confusing parts about make. But we're basically saying, I'm going to, uh, to uh, pack the thing that's represented by percent, uh, where that quoted dollar sign curly brace angle bracket mess is. I can't help you with that. You just, that, you just, that. It's like sharks. We just have to deal with it. All right? Um, the nice thing is that once we build something like this, especially one that we can reuse across our organization, we can start that out. Yes? You were worried about the sharks? Yeah. I am too. Also, there's hard keys. If it has a Yeah, that comes from the uh, luggage make version. Yes, that was in the uh, the luggage make version. So if that's bad, that somebody should contribute a change. No, that uh, was specifically to override the fact that it's the quarantine set. Right, 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 right. Yes. You're removing that. Yes, you're removing that. Yeah, I forgot what that that one meant. So that's just the other thing. So that when you install it, you can find logic. So you That's correct. It, what that's doing is it's removing the quarantine flag uh, from the extended attributes on the mm -hmm. file, which is one of those things that would, you know, tell you what Alistair was saying, which is, hey, you've downloaded a file from the internet. Um, warning, warning. 
sharks. So um, we can start off by adding these kinds of standards to a make file for a particular purpose. And then we can say, oh, I realize that I might need to install a screensaver again. Maybe I like rotating through lots of screensavers. Um, maybe there might be slide savers, uh, which I hear work again in Mountain Lion. Uh, so we might move them up one level to luggage.local, which is something I've just learned about since last year. I'm not sure if it was available last year. Uh, but luggage.local is a file that exists uh, in, the same, in the same directory uh, as uh, the luggage make file. And they can be site-specific uh, uh, settings that you're including. And they're just included automatically. When you include the luggage.make file, it will pull in luggage.local if it exists. So it's a handy thing. So I could put those stanzas in there. And then I or my team could reuse them over and over again uh, as we're making subsequent packages. And if it could become so useful to do that um, that I realize I'm doing it over and over again and somebody else might want it, and I'm able to, I can contribute that back to the luggage project so that it's included in luggage make in the future. So the next time somebody clicks on that zip button and downloads luggage make, they've got the screensaver support. And so that's how this has been built up over the years. Okay? So this, these are things that if you come across locations while you're building these make files that people could reuse, start thinking about how you can contribute back to this. We can make this better. Um, just in this presentation and the one last year, you know, I've, I've added a couple of locations um, that will be making it to luggage make eventually. Forgot to submit them last year. So this make file sitting in the same folder as our red pill screensaver. And here's our make file contents. We've got the title. We've got the reverse domain. We've got the version and the package name that I'm overriding and the pack rule, which results in this package. Boom. Just like the thunder the other night. Um, so now we're going to do a little bit, something a little bit tricky and install a Python module with a payload free package. We may not want to wrap the actual module up in the package payload uh, because Python does some pretty good package management of its own. Uh, so we're going to use the, that facility, the easy install tool, which is built into OS X. Um, it's a way to download and install packages and you can specify versions and that's cool. So we can specify even exact or relative versions. Normally, easy install will be run with sudo, so it needs elevated writes. Uh, but if we want to use this command in installer, the installer itself is going to be prompting for authorization, right? It's going to be, it's going to be elevated all by itself. Um, luggage does that, adds that into the package uh, setup by default. So this, this eventual installer, though, would require a, an internet connection, just as a warning. So we would not necessarily be able to run it when there's a bad internet connection. It turns out that all the pieces that we need for uh, easy install are information we need for luggage, too. So we can put them in a make file. We can set the title to the name of the module that we want to fetch and put in the reverse domain. I'm just using org.python for no apparent reason. And I just throw .pkg in my, uh, my reverse domains. I saw that Apple was doing that with their packages, and I just said, hey, that doesn't seem like a terrible idea. It's only four extra characters. Uh, so I, I put them in just to... Make sure I know this is a package as opposed to something else. I'm going to specify the version number of the, of the Python module that I want to install. And then I'm just going to have a post flight script. Post flight script is somewhat simple. Uh, the first set of lines in black gets the name of the Python module out of the info plist of the bundle package. There's an info plist inside the package installer. Uh, so it's, it's pulling information out of the package, in, uh, package contents itself. Um, we're also getting the version number the same way. And then at the end, we're choosing to echo out that we're installing the package module and package version. That'll appear in the logs when I install the mod, when I run installer. Um, and, I'm and I'm using the fully qualified path to easy install. I'm saying I want to install module equals equals version. Again, this is all pulled right out of the info plist for the package that I'm building, so it's even more meta. And then finally, we exit zero. Always exit your package script zero. 
And I actually had success this last year of getting a vendor to fix that in one of their scripts. So it can be done. Stay alive, we will find you. Um, with this installer, you're ready to do you're ready to do both forward and reverse DNS. <laughs> I needed to wake you up at some point here. Um, so let's build on top of the luggage and quickly add support for font subfolders. I want to have some time for questions. So if you've seen this before, uh, you may have seen font subfolders with Microsoft Office, where they create a Microsoft folder um, uh, under the library fonts folder. So let's do that. A, we're going we're to take an existing rule for library fonts. We're going to change it a bit, so we're going to create library fonts foundry. Font foundries are the sources of fonts. Um, and we've changed that name from the previous. We're adding in that we want to depend upon library fonts. And then we want to use a variable represented by the font foundry variable to uh, put in a new subfolder. And this technique lets, be, lets us be modular, so we can use this across a number of different font installs. We get fonts from different vendors. We can just put in a new variable uh, put, uh, define the variable differently, and you know we've created a new subfolder for that foundry. We need a packaging rule to put the font file in a new location. We start with we start with the base packaging rule for fonts. It's from Luggage Make. We copy and paste it into our Make file. And again, we set up Library Fonts Foundry, pack Library Fonts Foundry with the percent sign representing the font file that we're going to install. Fonts tend to be flat files, so this is good. We're going to depend upon the font file in the same folder as the make file, and we're going to use that library fonts foundry location as a dependency. And then we're going to install into that new subfolder. So we're going to get a little tricky here. Use another if statement. In our make file, if we don't set the font foundry folder, we're going to run this clause, which is basically going to be the same rules that I talked about before, but I'm going to I'm only going to change the names. I'm going to keep them the same as library fonts. This will be part of the source code that I'll post later. This doesn't fit well on a slide. But the real trick is that when Font Foundry is not empty, we're going to run the new rules that we just discussed, which are going to install into this subfolder. And then we construct our full make file. We include luggage make. We set Font Foundry equal to the, the vendor of the font which is uh, Rafe Levien, the uh, creator of Inconsolata, which is a good uh, monospace terminal font. I'm going to set the title and the reverse domain. And we're going to pack this, package this into library fonts foundry inconsolata.otf. And with the source code that I'll post, um, if font foundry is not set, set, the font that I'm installing here, this OTF file, will go into library fonts. If Font Foundry is set this way, the same font file will go into the Rafe Levien uh, subfolder. So that's a way that you can have your cake and eat it too. So I talked earlier about Suspicious Package. Um, this, is, this is a quick look plugin that I recommend that you install. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a very handy tool for letting you look at the output of your your packaging efforts. So it, it uh, has a number of different modes. You can look at the scripts. You can look at the contents and expand them the way I showed you during the demo. So I find that to be an invaluable re review tool when I'm checking output from luggage. So in this case, you can see the output from the package that I just created, which I did create. It does work. So some lessons for using uh, luggage. Uh, backslashes for continuation lines. You can use that trick in your make files as well, so you don't have really long lines if you want. Make sure that everything is installed in the right place, including make, package maker, and its sim link, um, if you're using the default flat packages, uh, and luggage make. And if you happen to be using it, luggage local as well. So one of the things I do in my organization is I package up luggage local um, and distribute that out as a package as well. So that as we check new versions of luggage local into our, our uh, repository, um, we make a new package of it and distribute that out to our packaging uh, staff. So this is what it looks like 
when the tools are not installed, you can run which make, which package maker. You can run some if statements to see if the files are installed in the wrong place. Um, I didn't have time to whip up a script that went through all the different permutations of checking this for you that you would be able to download and check your installation, but that can, can be a source of problems. This is the output that you would see for those same commands if you had luggage properly installed and set up. Anybody else feel like I'm installing TurboTax? <laughs> uh, if you have problems, um, run make with sudo. Again, most of the time you should be able to run it without, but you know, especially when you're learning, it's good to try to avoid some of the errors that can come from not running it with sudo. Uh, tabs versus spaces. This debate is endless in uh, text file based things. And um, make itself expects tabs um, when you're making rules like those pack rules and things like that. And so anytime I had indentations under pack and location, um, it wants tabs. It's a, it's a special thing with make. Uh, and the line endings must be Unix. Uh, you'll also see some warnings like this. Um, this is what this happens when uh, I think it's Package Maker is comparing your current uh, information or your your current uh, package that you're making against what exists in your in your own file system on the system you're building the packages on. So uh, you may want to run uh, disk utility to uh, repair permissions. Um, or you may just not want to have Mars Edit installed when you're setting up a demo. Uh, and so troubleshooting, those are all troubleshooting steps. Please go through those. There is a, uh, an, a Google group that helps out with it, with the luggage. It's a low volume friendly list, like my dog. Uh, and you can, uh, you can, uh, do some more with make with that. So thank you for your time and attention this morning. Uh, I really, really hope this has been helpful to you, um, especially some of the demo information. Uh, and if you want to learn more, there's uh, some places you can turn to. The slides will, uh, and links to slides uh, from the conference will eventually be posted here. They're not there yet. That URL doesn't exist, so give me a, a day. It's PSU Mac Cop underbar 2013 underbar luggage dot underbar talk at my website. I'll leave that up. Well, first I'll say that we're going to do Q, maybe A. Um, can't answer all your questions. I'm not an expert. Um, but uh, I'll try to answer questions if you have them. Any questions on luggage or pack? Right, so if I know where the files are going to go, um, then I found that the um, the GUI tools the GUI tools I've seen are mostly oriented around helping you find where files are being installed as you're as you're you know copying them or installing them. So I've used Composer for that, and it's been great. You know I've I've, I've packaged some things with that and that I wouldn't have packaged with Luggage. Um, but generally speaking, I, you know for the utility scripts and things like that, this is that's where I turn to Luggage. Uh, for drag and drop apps, that's where I would turn to Luggage. Um, you know, it, if, if I simply don't know where things go, I resort to something else. Um, or, I, or I use another tool first before I start importing things into luggage. Um, is that helping a bit? Yeah. Okay. Question? Any other slides that you're going to use on the Okay, so the question, the question is about restrictions that package build has. Package build is very restricted. Um, I'd really refer to the man page for that. There's a companion tool called product build which has fewer limitations for flat for building flat packages. So that's the third tool, package maker, package build, and uh, product build. Uh, package build and product build are meant uh, for um, developers making packages for app store apps. Um, I'd love to see product build support in luggage. So if anybody feels like they're going to be a make master or just want to try your hands at something, this would be a, a you know way to start. Um, but package build itself is, is pretty limited. Um, I'm, I don't remember all the limitations, though. Yes. Both of those, both of those other tools are only flat package tools. Uh, for all intents and purposes, I think package maker is deprecated, which is why I think we'll have to make this change in the next year or so. It all depends on what Apple continues or doesn't continue to support in the next version of the OS. Question? Uh, 
the the advantages of the so what are the advantages of, of uh, so so let me just rephrase the question first. The question was about whether the um, flat package format has advantages. Um, would it be encouraged? So I think if you if you have the kinds of of packages that fit within the limitations that are described in the man pages and, and other documentation for package maker, package build, product build, um, then those kinds of things, you know, you can certainly put out as flat packages today. And you can override this on a on a make file by make file basis with luggage. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it's really just a different format. I mean, it's the flat package format, the biggest advantage of it is that it's one single file. And you no longer need to wrap it in a disk image to store it on a Linux system that might be acting as a server for you, or a Windows server um, that, that uh, is acting, you know, is, is providing file depth, so. I haven't tried that. Um, actually, I haven't. Uh, I know that I've had problems running packages from file servers ever since OS X came out, but I used to do that with classic OS. But I haven't compared whether packages uh, in the bundle format or, or flat format have an advantage in that respect. Any other questions? Yes. So. Um, the luggage shows the test traction and this is happening in the industry, is that right? It has not really been developed. So luggage it does have traction in the in the uh, sysadmin community. It came from sysadmins, oh, okay. um, uh, and uh, it it does not, to my knowledge, have traction in the developer community. But I I would love it to have some traction there because they know how to code. They know how to code, right? And they could help contribute. Um, but I know it was re uh, recently mentioned on the um, Edge Cases podcast. Uh, and, uh, you know, so hopefully some developers might look into it uh, because of that. Question? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Let, let me rephrase the question first. So as a general packaging um, you know, techniques question, um, you know, we've had someone who is packaging um, other ways and, um, you know, how, how, how do you keep your machine clean? Um, yes, VMs are an option. Luggage is very self-contained. Um, you keep things in, in the project folder um, and perhaps in a, in a version control repository. It does, and it cleans up after itself. One of the commands I didn't discuss was make clean. Another one is make super clean. Um, it's like the super chili last night, I guess. Um, and uh, it's uh, it's very uh, you know it's very easy to clean up after uh, a luggage run, and it'll help do it for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're at the end. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day at Penn State, Mac and Mins, 2013.